Harrington man Terry Nichols is officially charged with playing a role in the Oklahoma City bombing. Terry Nichols is not in Wichita tonight. Where is he? Good evening, I'm Bryce Madison. I'll let you know next in a live report. The hearing turned downtown Wichita into somewhat of a tourist site and a media gathering point. And the prime suspects fostered a friendship at Fort Riley. We'll hear from the soldiers serving there right now. Details next on Eyewitness News. Live from Kansas' number one news source, Roger Cornish, Cindy Close, Merrill Teller's Doppler radar weather, and Bruce Hurdle's sports, this is Channel 12 Eyewitness News at 6. He may have walked in a witness, but he walked out an accused bombing terrorist. Good evening, I'm Roger Cornish. And I'm Cindy Close. Thank you for joining us. Our top story, Terry Nichols was back in a federal courtroom today facing serious charges. We have Team 12 coverage that includes details of the charges against him. We'll see how the eyes of many Wichitans and the world were on the downtown federal courthouse. And a common link between Nichols and Timothy McVeigh works to put the shine back on a tarnished image. We begin Team 12 coverage with Bryce Madison, who joins us with details of the court appearance. Bryce. Cindy, Terry Nichols' second federal court appearance did not last long, about 25 minutes, but it may turn out to be the most important 25 minutes of his life. In fact, the short amount of time may be the beginning to the end of his life. There are now two suspects accused in last month's bombing of the Oklahoma City Federal Building. The latest is Terry Lynn Nichols. The 40-year-old Harrington, Kansas man made his second appearance in Wichita Federal Court in connection with the case under tight security, not only flanked by federal agents, but wearing a bulletproof vest for his own protection. Formerly, Nichols is charged with the malicious damage and destruction by means of fire and explosion of a building, a vehicle, and other real property owned and used by the United States government. The same charge his former Army buddy, Timothy McVeigh, faces, each carrying the same consequence if found guilty, the death penalty. He's charged with one of the most serious crimes that has ever happened in our country, so he's obviously very concerned and very upset about the whole thing. Everybody involved in this case, the agents have worked so hard and the prosecutors have worked hard too. You know, I'll, uh, I'll be glad to go back and see my family, um, but uh, it was, uh, you know, I, I think uh, hopefully that, you know, justice will be done in the case. Nichols is now in Oklahoma after being quickly whisked to McConnell Air Force Base and flown to federal marshals waiting in Oklahoma City. Those marshals took uh, Nichols to El Reno at the federal prison where McVeigh is. That's just west of Oklahoma City. Nichols is maintaining his innocence. McVeigh, on the other hand, is not saying anything. Nichols will appear in Oklahoma federal court tomorrow. Roger. Okay. Thanks, Bryce. Terry Nichols' son is not escaping questions about the bombing. 12-year-old Josh is living in Las Vegas with his mother. It has been reported that the young Nichols was questioned for several hours over the weekend by federal agents, being asked if he knew anything about Timothy McVeigh or the case against his father. Josh may have stayed in Harrington with his father around the time of the bombing. People from newsrooms across the country converged on Wichita today for Nichols' court appearance. It put the community in the national spotlight once again. Christy Shear joins us from the federal courthouse with reaction from locals and what turned out to be a media circus. Christy. Roger, things are calm here now. Very few of us left here in the wake of today's hearing. When Terry Nichols left the city, so did most of the media. Reports today say federal prosecutors... Not the kind of publicity in which a city prides itself. City bombing. Nichols is scheduled to go before a federal magistrate in Wichita today. But one by one, as word of the hearing spread, the media began to arrive. I would hope that the American uh, public does not view this as something that's uh, negative towards our state. Uh, it's very unfortunate that these individuals are from our state, and uh, any, of course it could have happened anywhere. Timothy McVeigh, the man charged first in connection with the Oklahoma City bombing, served at Kansas's Fort Riley. Terry Nichols is a resident of Harrington, Kansas. And by the time Nichols appeared at the Wichita's federal courthouse today, the streets were lined with satellite trucks, live vans, photographers, reporters, and onlookers. I'm just observing what's going on. You know, what happened in Oklahoma was a bad situation, you know. And um, I just want to get a glance at this guy to see what things about. It's also interesting to see all of the uh, news media here, and uh, it's kind of like seeing a presidential uh, uh, 
call them. I mean, it's just an interesting thing. By the hearings in, media representatives from all over the country had gathered here at the Wichita Federal Courthouse, but with many of the documents still sealed in this case, they came away with very little new information. I think that's the most overblown, a little bit covered too much. But I, people want to know about it, so we, you guys provide the news for them. But it's all over now. Since Terry Nichols is in Oklahoma, this may be the last time Wichita is in the spotlight in connection with this case anyway. Roger? All right. Thank you. Jim? Terry Nichols and Timothy McVeigh spent time together in the Army at Fort Riley. Team 12 coverage continues now with Donald Forbes, who visited the Kansas base today. He has details of the impact it's had on the base that has a sterling record of service. Fort Riley, another part of the Kansas Connection. Home of the U.S. Army's 1st Infantry, better known as the Big Red One. But since the devastating blast in Oklahoma City, the base has been under a growing spotlight as two ex-soldiers, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, both stationed together at the fort, have become prime suspects. Can Fort Riley be held responsible for something like that? I don't think so, sir. You know, that's a couple of guys that did something on their own. But this is the first time the media has been allowed to enter the fort since the devastation in Oklahoma. And the Army admits it's an attempt to soften the beating and harsh publicity it's been taking for the national and international media. Most Americans aren't going to make that leap. They're not going to make that linkage between Fort Riley and Oklahoma. But it's more than just armored tanks, firepower, and bullets. Soldiers here say it's about integrity and about commitment to the USA. And say the two men now formally charged with the bombing have obviously forgotten everything that's instilled in soldiers here at Fort Riley. A lot of soldiers are saying, my personal is saying, they're not part of us no more. The last thing we want is for anybody out there uh, in America to believe that the, the typical American soldier is somehow reflected here in these past events because nothing is further from the truth. Even so, it still may take some time before this publicity dust settles. Donald Forbes, Eyewitness News, Fort Riley. Officers point out both McVeigh and Nichols had perfect records while in the service. We'll conclude Team 12 coverage with a recap of the events today concerning Terry Nichols. He has been charged in connection with the bombing in Oklahoma City. Nichols was moved to a Oklahoma jail as soon as the hearing ended, and he could face life in prison or the death penalty. We'll have other news of the day in just a few minutes. And if you look closely, you might see chimpanzees in the trees. The story later on. Hi, I'm Errol Teller. Looks like the weather's going to flip-flop in the next 24 hours. Those with sun today will have clouds tomorrow and vice versa. I'm Bruce Hurdle. Can you hum a few bars of Row, Row, Row Your Boat? Tonight's rising stars can. And it was crash test dummy day at Indianapolis. We'll have the details coming up in sports. Closed captioning provided in part by Capital Federal Savings, Kansas' leading residential lender, and by beautiful Rest Haven, Wichita's only locally owned mortuary and cemetery combination. Don't pay for another car repair and stop making high monthly car payments. Hamilton LaGreca Chevrolet Geo Pontiac has an alternative for you. Lease the new 95 Geo Prism from just $169 a month for 36 months. Over 60 new Geo Prisms with dual airbags, a three-year bumper to bumper warranty, and much more. Lease as low as $169 a month. Plus, we'll even pay off your trade at Hamilton LaGreca Chevrolet Geo Pontiac Hutchinson. Call 1-800-NEW-CHEVY. What makes a Dairy Queen Mother's Day or graduation frozen cake so special? Lots and lots of delicious Dairy Queen chocolate and vanilla soft serve. And a layer of chocolate fudge and chocolate crunch. But the icing on the cake is you can get it decorated our way or your way. Dairy Queen graduation cakes and Mother's Day cakes. Very special cakes for very special people. We treat you right. Dairy Queen. Multimedia Cablevision announces a fantastic special installation offer. Between now and May 12th, cable installation is being offered at the unbelievable price of $9.95. This is your chance to enjoy all that cable has to offer with CNN, Discovery, ESPN, Family Channel, Nashville Network, and many more. All for an installation price of $9.95. But it's only until May 12th. In Wichita, call 264-2000 or call your local Multimedia Cablevision office to order today.
River Festival fireworks. And for the first time ever at Lawrence Dumont Stadium, it's the Colorado Silver Bullets women's professional baseball team. That's the Colorado Silver Bullets with manager Phil Necro taking on former Wichita State baseball stars and the Wichita alumni at Lawrence Dumont. So for the best seat in Wichita for the downtown fireworks, head to Lawrence Dumont Stadium on Saturday, May 20th. Call 267-3372 to reserve your tickets today. That's 267-3372. Don't miss out. Call now. A music program had a few sour notes last night. Sour notes some say were caused by a teacher. Wichita officials are reviewing the actions of an elementary music teacher during a music program last night. The program was canceled in progress. Tracy West has details. It was supposed to be a music program to showcase the musical talents of elementary students in grades kindergarten through second at Enterprise Elementary. The music program was halted while in progress when the music teacher said the crowd was too noisy and unruly. I, I'm sorry, but I do expect it to be quiet. I expect my students to be quiet and I expect the audience to be quiet. <laughs> Some parents who attended say the teacher was out of line and felt she was rude when she asked the crowd to quiet down. I didn't think she was very, very professional myself. I didn't think for her being a singing teacher and having little kids like that, five-year-olds, I really didn't think she's very, very professional about the whole deal. Were you upset about what happened? Yeah, I was bawling all, all the way home. Why? Because I got scared. But this group of parents say it wasn't the teacher's fault, and the teacher does not deserve the criticism she's getting. The kids ended up getting the raw end of the deal because of the, the audience not trying to listen and respect the wishes of the uh, music teacher. Wednesday afternoon, all of the students here at Enterprise Elementary were sent home with a letter from the principal. The letter acknowledges that there was a problem at the music program Tuesday evening. It also says school officials are looking into the matter and hope to have it resolved very quickly. The music teacher is not working at the campus so that we can go about uh, carrying out the information finding session and getting that one resolved. Baker met with students involved in the school program Wednesday afternoon. The school plans to reschedule the event. Tracy West, Eyewitness News, Wichita. Wichita school officials say they are looking into the incident. The teacher involved in the controversy has taken a few days of personal leave. If your job search isn't going so well, you might try going high tech. Today, the Wichita Chamber of Commerce introduced the Wichita Nation Job Network. It contains job information for openings in Wichita, other cities in Kansas, and from 34 other states. The information is updated on a weekly basis and is available at 11 sites right now, two others in just a few weeks. For more information on the use of the computers and the places you can access the information, call 268-1184. The state of Kansas is looking to give away millions, but it's to go to its rightful owners. The state treasurer's office has set up special computers to help people claim their unclaimed property. The databases have 300,000 records of property due someone. Tomorrow, the computers will be set up at Bank 4 in Derby. And Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at Bank 4 downtown and at the Town East and Town West branches. You can stake your claim between 9 a.m. and 3 o'clock on those days. Another gray and dreary day in Kansas. But will the sun shine in time for Riverfest? Uh, Merrill has details next. Is your boss pushing you to the limit? I said I need that file today. Is your boss causing you too much stress? It's 9.05. I wanted my coffee at 9 o'clock sharp. Have you taken all you can handle? If you could just pick up my laundry on your lunch break. Does your boss drive you crazy? There's something you can do about it. Find out during Bad Bosses, tonight on Eyewitness News at 10. Hi, Kansas. Brian Borg here at Rusty Egg Ford. I want to show you how we're sale pricing brand new 95 Aerostar XLTs with seven passenger seating, tilt, cruise, AC, cassette, and so much more. Only $14,965 with over 20 to choose from. Another great value on 95 Ranger XLT Super Cabs, really well equipped, all at only $11,995 and over 30 to choose from. That's why we're the leading Ford dealer in the entire state of Kansas. We're putting you first, keeps us number one. Rusty Egg Ford, Wichita.
It's the best offer ever on America's best-selling car. Right now, you can get $1,500 down payment cash when you lease any Ford Taurus in stock. $1,500. Sedans, wagons, even the sporty new Taurus SE. They're all available with $1,500 customer cash, which means you can lease a Taurus, sedan, or wagon for just $279 a month for 24 months. Don't miss this chance to get the best offer ever on the best-selling car in America. Get to your local Ford dealer and get into Ford Taurus today. They play for the love of the game and dream of one day becoming a legend. Sonic and Coca-Cola salute the spirit of America's game with Upper Deck's Heroes of Baseball trading cards. A three-card pack is free when you buy Sonic's triple feature. A big double meat, double cheeseburger, fries, and a medium Coke classic right now, just $3.59. The Heroes of Baseball, now at America's Drive-In. Sonic, driving for a change. Hi, I'm Dr. Red Duke. There's a lot of items that we use to make these lawns beautiful that can be dangerous if we don't handle them properly. Dr. Red Duke, tonight at 10, only on Channel 12. Now, Eyewitness Weather with Merrill Teller, Kansas' most experienced meteorologist. Good evening. Were you one of the lucky ones today in Kansas? Lucky to see some sunshine? Well, you were if you live in the western part of the state, but for most of the folks in the central and east, nope. No sunshine today, or very little of it. Let's check it here in Wichita right now. Yeah, it's not out there right now. Cloudy skies, there are some thin spots. You can see where the sun is on the other side of the clouds, but just not really shining through yet. 61 degrees, 65% our humidity. Winds out of the north at 10, and they're gonna be backing off through the night. The pressure holding steady. Well, let's take a look at the numbers across Kansas, and look at this, only 54 degrees at Concordia right now. This is supposed to be a low temperature for this time of the year, not a six o'clock in the evening temperature. Also some 50s in the east, and where we have the 60s, they're mostly just in the low 60s. A little more sunshine out in the southwest, got into the upper 60s in some locales in southwestern Kansas this afternoon, so a little bit better there. And you can see north to northwesterly winds backing off now, generally about eight to 16 miles per hour. The day started out on the cool side with most of our morning lows in the 40s, but we did have several locales in the lower part of the 50s. But again, these temperatures below what they're supposed to be this time of the year. But not by much here in Wichita, getting down to 50, just two below the normal. But look at that, 62 for our high today. We should see like mid 70s this time of the year. And back in 1967 on today's date, it hit 100 degrees, the earliest in the year we have ever seen a triple digit temperature. Let's take a look on the big satellite view. You can, you'll be able to see as we put things into motion, the clouds just spinning around from here and heading over toward the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. But I mean, look at the, the eastern part of this storm was all the way over to the east coast now and pushing out to sea. And yeah, more thunderstorms down through the Gulf area. Although the heaviest action right now is headed through the northeastern Gulf and heading into the northern portions of Florida. But look, the cool front is still way back here. All that's just getting way out ahead with impulses in the upper atmosphere pushing eastward. Uh, we still have all the low clouds here in Kansas. And look what's on our doorstep already. New Mexico, Colorado, there's more clouds. Those are going to be slowly making their eastward tonight. There's no rain of note. There are a few scattered showers in the mountains right now, but uh, nothing out through the plains. But it looks like by tomorrow evening, maybe a few little showers or stray thunder shower. We're not looking for anything major from that as it kicks across our area. But by Friday, especially Friday night, this next system out to the west will be close enough, and that could be kicking some bigger storms, but that's not until tomorrow night, or I should say Friday night. Tomorrow night, maybe just a few scattered showers around. So for tonight, looking for still a lot of clouds, especially north central and northeast, but they will be breaking over the remainder of the state with lows, upper 30s to upper 40s. And then tomorrow, looking for partly cloudy skies. The clouds will be on the increase from west to east during the day with highs mid 60s to lower 70s. Tonight for Wichita and Hutchinson, down to a chilly 46 degrees with decreasing clouds and northerly winds only 5 to 12. Tomorrow, look for partly cloudy skies and back up to 71 with southerly breezes only about 5 to 15. And then for Friday, could have a couple of showers in here early in the day, then a little bit of sunshine, and then Friday night, thunderstorms. Hopefully we fit in most of the river festival activities between those, but then the chances for showers continue on, at least scattered showers,
showers on Saturday. A little better chance for some thunderstorms around Sunday. Yes, Monday also. What a way to get things started, huh? Hey, it goes for 10 days, gang. Let's not worry about a couple of days with rain. Carolyn Ford of Wichita, you're our weather umbrella winner this evening. You can come out to our studios and pick that up. And if you'd like to enter our contest, there's where you write. Send us your name and address. Starting to feel like a grouch, Mal. <laughs> Me or you? I am oh, with okay. this weather. What's new? <laughs> Tonight's rising stars are quite a crew. We'll meet the people behind the oars next in sports. Kathleen won $25,000 in cash on the bonus round of the last Wheel of Fortune. Now, here's your chance to play along at home. Thing is the category. Here's a hint. Springtime is when you're most likely to see this. Did you solve the puzzle? Flower. Yeah. <laughs> here's a vacation in the British Isles at stake as we play the next bonus round of America's game, Wheel of Fortune. Coming up next on KBS and Channel 12. Hello, folks. I'm Charlie Prentice back with you this Wednesday from Mel Hamilton Ford, where the race is on to sell and lease 500 new and used cars, trucks, and vans before the Indy 500 at the end of May. And by the way, it's also Ford Truck Month, which means we can save you money on a hard-loaded 1995 F-Series XLT. $189 a month on a red carpet lease for an XLT with AM, FM, with cassette, tilt and cruise, power locks and windows. Too much to mention, folks, but remember, if your truck doesn't have this tag on the front of it, you probably paid too much. Now, any McDonald's Happy Meal is just $199. Hmm, just $199 buys your kid a hamburger, cheeseburger, or McNugget Happy Meal. Wow, so hurry to McDonald's for the, oh, the $1.99 Happy Meal. Even better! Whoa, Spider-Man! Sorry I can't hang around. Because the action's at McDonald's. Now you can get a Spider-Man Happy Meal with cool characters and their hot cars. Spider-Man, I just saw Scorpion in the drive-thru. One with every Spider-Man Happy Meal you buy. Celebrate Mother's Day with a gift from Treetop Nursery. Moms will love their outstanding selection of beautiful annuals and perennials. Choose from a wide selection of hanging baskets 30% off. Beautiful flowering white dogwood or bald cypress trees are 50% off. And visit Treetop's gift center for that special garden or home accessory. Choose from baskets, pottery, and other gift ideas for that special mom who's hard to buy for. Treetop has extended their weekday hours until 8 p.m. Treetop Nursery, the ultimate in service and selection. The second season for the NBA continues tonight. That's right, and it's really not the Bulls and the Magic. It's Powerade versus Gatorade tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or round two of Nike versus Reebok, if you wish, when Corporation Jordan takes on company Shaq. Shaq and the Magic landed the opening volley when Jordan faltered down the stretch in game one. But for the Bulls to be successful, they got to get Scottie Pippen back into the fold. I think it'll be good for our team, uh, for me to get going offensively. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to take a lot of context of our offense just to uh, get my, myself going, I get, get my stats up. Uh. Look at the new fashion from Shaq. Oh, that's nice. This is the only playoff action on the playoff hardwood tonight. After a lackluster performance last night at Oral Roberts, the Shocks look to bounce back against the Titans again at night or tonight at home. First pitch is at 7 o'clock. The Wranglers, meanwhile, continue to get food poisoning from home cooking. They're 5 and 11. Actually, this is the Royals last night, but we'll tell you about the Wranglers. They're 5 and 11 in Lawrence Dumont Stadium. They try to improve that mark as their series with Shreveport continues at 7.15 downtown. Now, you just saw the Royals. I'll tell you that Chris Haney gets his chance against the Tribe tonight. Hopefully, he'll fare better than last night's predecessor. Doug Linton gave up eight runs, as you saw, before recording it out in the very first inning last night. Well, we're all very aware of the prowess of the Wichita State baseball program, and we know that bowling is big at the Shockerville. But there's another group of Shocker athletes making big enough waves to become tonight's rising stars. Before you've even hit the snooze button, they've begun their attack of the river. That kind of dedication is something that any serious athlete has to, has to live with, like anything you get used to. With little to no rowing experience, they all come to the program in the same way. I was approached by the novice men's crew coach last year in the CAC during like the first week of school. He just, um, he said broad shoulders, he just looked, you're built well. and. Asked if I was interested in going out for crew. Okay, so you roam around the campus looking for athletic types, but isn't there also an emotional denominator? Rowers will do will do anything it takes. I mean, when it comes to walking out in the rain, I mean they'll walk through the puddle, they won't walk around, they don't, you know, it's kind of it is kind of funny. Throw in the relative newness of this sport to its athletes, and you have the shocker formula for success. 
People who would join crew are very driven. You know, they don't know anything about crew when they first start. They learn the sport and they want to go back and do it better because they're driven to try to get this right. This is no pursuit for the weak of mind or short of breath. Rowing in boats of four and eight, they push their limits over nearly a mile and a half of water. You always find out that you can probably push yourself just a little bit further if you let other people help you. You know, when you're encouraging each other, it really makes it a little bit easier to go past that, go past that point, past the pain. It's on the other side of pain, rowers say, where you truly understand the beauty of this sport, and therein lies its hook. You're focused more on harmony than, than particularly like uh, stroke rate or power. It's just you, you get this click going where every stroke is just, you feel the power of the entire boat surging every stroke. It's just like um, a wheel that just keeps spinning and spinning with each, with each stroke. Nothing like any other sport I've played. Wichita State is an emerging as a regional power. They're at the Dad Vale National Championships in Philadelphia starting on Friday. Finally tonight, the first wreck of the week at Indy for a first time driver there. Davey Hamilton's in the hospital after taking it off the wall around turn four in practice today. Complaining of leg pain, he's been x-rayed at an Indianapolis hospital. Ari Leyendijk turned the day's fastest laps at 232.468 miles per hour. Paul Tracy, Robbie Gordon right on his tail. The battle for the pole is coming up on Saturday. Rather uneventful other than yeah. the fast speeds, though. It's the first guy off the wall. I'm afraid to drive home now. Uh -huh. <laughs> it took years to evolve, but it became official today. Some of Wichita's chimps will get a new home. The story next. Tonight's Catch a Rising Star has been brought to you in part by St. Joseph Medical Center Sports Medicine. Pros, the pros use. To the designers of the new Dodge Stratus, performance isn't just how a car handles, but what it handles. So along with a rigid frame and modified double wishbone suspension for control, they also developed the biggest trunk in its class. So Stratus isn't just a great driver's car, it's a great packer's car. New Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. Oh, there was a farmer had a dog and bingo. That's really annoying, isn't it? But what better way to introduce new Kansas Lottery Bingo than through the miracle of song? Now this is the game. On every Kansas Lottery Bingo ticket, there are 56 ways to win. And here's the deal. You play the game, and we promise to stop playing this song. So play new bingo. Please. Obviously, the best way to treat a sports injury is to prevent it. That's why St. Joseph Medical Center's sports medicine team teaches coaches, trainers, and parents about fitness, testing, and conditioning, injury prevention and treatment, and even provides on-site trainer services to get you ready for the game. St. Joseph's education, prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation services make it the only complete sports medicine program in Wichita, and it makes sure you're always safe. St. Joseph's Sports Medicine, the pros the pros use. From here, things look no different than they did yesterday or five years ago. But on the surface, everything is changing. Conflict can arise anytime, anywhere. Protecting America's vital interests requires technologies that allow us to respond quickly and decisively from long range. Where will these technologies come from? One is already here. See the Northrop Grumman B-2 this Saturday at McConnell Air Force Base with Senator Bob Dole. Viewing begins at 11.30. Coming up tonight at 10 on the Nightcast, Donald Forbes begins his look at our boss. No, excuse me, bad bosses. Sorry. And we'll meet a woman finding some good flowing in South Dakota floodwaters. Join us for these stories and more on the Nightcast at 10. And for the bad weather tonight, huh? Oh, I'll tell you what. Well, not tonight's not going to be bad weather. In fact, we're looking for decreasing clouds, all except in the east where it's going to stay pretty much cloudy. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds and temperatures still a little short of where they're supposed to be this time mm. in May. Just won't. Doesn't want to give Come up back yet. And no. Finally tonight, the chimps at the zoo are jumping for joy tonight. That's because they will be the winners from the largest ever corporate gift to the Zoological Society. 
Koch Industries has donated $500,000 to build a new outdoor apes and man exhibit. The other winners, the people who attend the zoo, who can look forward, it, forward for it to open in the spring of next year. It will be called Coke, Orangutan, and Chimpanzee Habitat. Now you'll know where to find Roger when he's not <laughs> That's here. That's right. Good vacation place for me. I hope you have a good evening. We'll see you at 10. Thank you for making Channel 12 Eyewitness News the most watched news in Kansas.